Boy, have I got a fun project for us today. We're going to turn these little podlets. Uh, these are not beyond the, uh, the ability of a novice turner with some basic school, uh, tool control. And if you lack tool control, this might be a way to develop it. Uh, turning these thin stems and these thin flowers are, are just really a lot of, lot of fun. They're quick to make and they make great gifts for your, your sweetie. Might be a good Valentine gift, but that's a ways off. But you go ahead and get started. They do require a piece of, of green wood. Branch wood is absolutely the best because the pith is more likely to be off center because as the branch grows out the side of the tree, it develops some reaction wood and, and it grows at a different. Uh, the pith doesn't go through the middle because you don't want the pith to grow through the stem. But dry wood, you're not going to have good, good luck. The green wood is easier to turn. It's more fun to turn. The shavings fly off. You don't need to sharpen your uh, tools as, uh, as often. The green wood is a little more elastic, so it's got some flexibility when you're turning, so it's less likely to snap. Also, green wood, you're likely to retain the bark. If it's green, you know, the bark will almost always stay on there. If it's dried, uh, not so much so. You're going to start with a piece, oh, maybe two to three and a half inches in diameter, perhaps six to eight uh, inches long. Uh, before you get into the longer ones, you might want to turn some, some shorter ones. I want to give a shout out to Greg Galejos, who demonstrated this project for my club, Georgia Association of Woodturners, uh, th this summer. He's turned probably thousands of these things, so it was very interesting to watch him. Thanks, Greg, for this wonderful idea. You're going to be using reaction wood where the center is off. Uh, the, the pith is off center, but if not, you can use a straight. These were from some small trees that were recently uh, harvested out of my my yard. So here's the pith. So I've off centered at least a quarter of an inch. Now I've drawn a line here because I want to make sure that I off centered in the same direction because I don't want to have the pith uh, crossing. So here's the pith. So I'm going to off center it right about right about there. Uh, boy, that's a soft center, so I hope this uh, this wood is uh, poplar, so I hope it, hope it works out. You want to evaluate your wood, make sure you're getting uh, which end you want to be the flower, and which end you want to uh, put a tenon on. You can use a bowl gouge or a spindle gouge. I'm going to use a half inch bowl gouge for a lot of this project. Turn to make sure it's not going to hit. This is a little bit off center because of the way I'm having to, since the pith is pretty running fairly true. So I'm going to keep the speed down just a little bit while I take this down a little bit. Because this wood's so green, it's going to be drying and shrinking, so we want to, I'm going to go around at least three times, we want to uh, tighten, it, tighten it up from time to time. I'm going to start off with facing this off. I'm going to use my half inch bowl gouge. Just come in flat initially. bit below, above center, so let's adjust the tool height. And go ahead and take off the live center so I don't get Turner's elbow. When you've got a colored center, I think it adds a little bit to the to the flower. The better you make these flowers, the more wavy they will get when they dry. That's a good thing. You can sand these or, or not, but if you're going to sand it, you ought to do it now. So I'm going to at least touch it up with some 100 grit because it is a little bit coarse there. 
it doesn't take a whole lot on the on the inside of the flour for most of them. And I want a very thin flour, less than an eighth of no more than an eighth of an inch. Uh, so I'm going to cut accordingly, but you always hollow the inside a little bit first, then you change the profile because you need as much mass back here while it's turning as possible. So let's just reduce this a little bit. We're going to do this in stages at about an inch at a time. I'm going to come in again almost horizontal with the bevel going almost straight in, looking at the shadow line. I'm kind of guesstimating how thick this thing is, but I can tell is with with it this thick, I've got I've got a lot further to to go. Again, so I'm going to come in and I'm closing one eye and looking down on it to see how close I am from the edge. Keep using my digital calipers. Way too thick. Way, way too thick. Need to come in and reduce the that bark rim a little even more. This is taller. This is my third one and it's a little bit taller than the other so it'll be a little more of a challenge. calipers again. Oh, still too thick. This is uh, much thicker than an eighth of an inch. Almost three-eighths in, in places. Again, holding this almost parallel. We come in there and This is a more challenging cut when it's off-center because you're coming in from the air into the wood and in cutting a little bit of air. I want it a little bit thinner than that. Uh, so I bark. I could caliper that, but I don't think it's worth the time. I think I just need to kind of eyeball it in from the side. Folks might use a light to see how thin they get. The thinner this in, the, the thinner this is, the more wavy it's going to get. And I think I can make it a little thinner still. I think I'm going to switch to a, uh, a half an inch spindle gouge, which has got a little uh, the other that bowl gouge about 55 degrees. Knock off some of the dried shavings here. I think I can come in there and refine this a little bit. At some point I gotta say that may be thin enough to keep from losing the bark and because it's off-center so I think and this is a little bit larger so I think I don't know got a rough rough edge where I start slicing maybe 30 seconds of an inch I'm gonna turn the speed up now to about 2000 and I think that'll make that entry cut just a bit easier Too much and snatched snatched it off. You ever watch a tennis tournament where the, the tennis player swings and misses a shot and he's and he 
he's looking carefully at his strings as if it's, it's like the ball went through the strings and he blames the racket. Well, that's a little bit like that one I did with Popper. I'm going to blame the wood. <laughs> so, let's see. How do we recover from this on this plank? May mean that Poplar, the other two weren't from Poplar. Um, and this wood may be a little, may not be the best course, uh, the, the best candidate for this kind of project. Because uh, these growth rings are fairly large, so it was fairly uh, fast growing. Um, mm -hmm -hmm. I think what I'm going to do, I'm just going to back off of this and we'll start again over here without a without bark. So let me part this off. Alright, so let's try again. This time I'm not going to have a bark edge. They don't have to have a bark edge, it just makes them look kind of nice. So let's Sand it a little bit. All right. So now it's probably running a little bit truer. Um, so maybe I won't have that same issue. So we'll we'll see. Unfortunately, I don't have another species of wood. The first two uh, were the only pieces I had of that particular one. Rather springy, it's not one of my favorite woods. Well, Speed up again. Well, I'm trying to get it too thin. That's the third time. Boy, I'm glad I didn't start with poplar. I started with that better, better quality wood. I think I'm going to give up on this poplar and, and try to find a different branch. Okay, I persevered. I made it smaller, got rid of the bark. We'll see how it works. I don't think that I'm going to have real good luck with it, but we'll see. Now, here's the trick. You want to, again, work down an increment of an inch or so, and then you want to start really working the edge of this. You're cutting with the, with the bottom wing, not the tip because you don't want this to climb over it. Um, you're you're using this to slice almost like a skew. And again, the, the width of this, which I don't think I've commented now, uh, Greg says make it about two toothpicks thick. Uh, that's not on my caliper, so I had to get a couple of toothpicks as shown here and measure that. But it's, a, 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 he says, actually less than an inch. And uh-oh, see that flex in there? All right, time for me to bring up some tailstock support. Um, but I can't press very high. It's just uh, a tailstock support to keep this from flexing. So let's see how we, we handle that. I'm going to use a... Uh, he suggests use a cone center. I'm going to use a round center. So I'm going to use a soft touch in my Nova Life Center. This is cut out of a piece of Delrin. And it's blunt because this is fairly blunt, and I think that'll work fine. I still think I'm going to put a couple of pieces of uh, paper towel in there. I can't really press down on this a 
all I can do is just stabilize it just a bit. So I'm going to fold this over, nothing scientific, and bring this in. And then I want to put just enough pressure where if I turn this, this will turn. Hopefully. Without putting any real pressure here. There we go. And that may be as tight as I'm going to get it. And I'm going to slow it down and slowly spring, bring the speed up so as to... Uh, this is not turning, so I'm going to give it just a little, another touch of the hand wheel. Uh, it's barely turning. Let's turn that off and try that again. No, need to go a little bit more. And this is just where I think experience comes in, which I really don't have on these. But you don't want to put so much pressure that this is going to flex and flop around on you because you'll really have, have a hard time cutting it. But I think that's close enough because I just want to stable this. Stabilize it a little bit. And I'm going to come back to my bowl gouge and I need to drop the tool rest just a little bit to make it easier to cut on center. So, like I say, now I'm going to get slowly get the speed up to about 2,000. And now I'm going to come in there and just gradually. Use this, like I say, like a skew, and just scrape. But you've got to leave yourself room here. You don't want to hit this mass or you're going to have a bit of a catch. So keep, keep working this down. Now we can start taking it back. Light touch, light touch, straight down. Balls there, I gotta get rid of, and it didn't like it. the The center pith of this wood is just so soft. I could tell that when I was punk, trying to put it, a use a uh, uh, spring spring punch that it was just going in there too deep. So it was just too soft. I need a wood a little bit harder and with a little smaller growth rings. These are just growing too fast. So, I always believe in doing a bit of uh, forensics analysis when you get a problem like I had. And what I see when I pull this, it's not that thick. It's not as thick as the, uh, and it's a uniform thickness. But if I take this piece and just pull on it just a little bit, it just breaks off to that soft grain. It's just not nearly as strong as uh, wood as that uh, other stuff I used. Um, I think that was the early ones were sweet gum, but I'm not sure. You don't have to have a bend in them, but I think a bend looks very nice. And the way you do that, if you're air drying it, it takes about 24 hours. You want to put a heavy weight through here. It could be a, a jar of liquid, or this has got glue in it. it I'd like it to be a little heavier, but it, it, it is what it is. Um, if you do it, you can also do it in a microwave oven with a uh, something that's microwave safe such as a coffee cup and just put it on there and if you do it in the microwave it takes you about uh, oh maybe a minute to two minutes depending on how wet the wood is and you got to be careful of this because it might when it's you don't want to crack it at this point uh, but if you leave it like this for about 24 hours it'll get a bend uh, I might be able to do just a little bit more, just a little bit more, just a little bit more, okay. And I'll just let that sit up for 24 hours and we'll see how we do. So I told you this is going to be a fun project, didn't I? Uh, it takes me about 45 minutes to turn one. Might, you might be faster or slower, but don't worry about it. It's like uh, eating a slate, uh, steak. If you enjoy the meat, it doesn't matter how long it's taken you to eat it. Just enjoy it, so... But this is, this is fun. Give it a try, and then after you're successful doing a few shorter ones, be like me. I'm going to try one that's a little bit longer. I might even have to use a steady rest. Stay tuned. I also want to mention, I give uh, lessons, uh, hands-on lessons in my shop. So if you're around the Atlanta area, live in the area, or, or close by, or traveling through, feel free to uh, give me a call. Uh, contact information's on my website. Y'all stay safe. Come on back here.